It's the award-winning radio program. Relax and enjoy. And now your host. Hi all, welcome to the segment of A Voice in the Desert titled Manna from Heaven. In this segment, we will share with you some short nuggets of the Word of God. This segment is done with the purpose that you might have a time with the Word of God for those brief moments when you need to hear from God or you just need some rest time in the Lord. Different from our regular podcast that goes more in detail into the Word of God, segments from Manna are brief and intended to expand your knowledge of God, increasing your intimacy with His Word. We pray that it is edifying to your walk with Jesus Christ. And now we leave you with our message of the day. Hi folks, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Great to be with you once again here and being able to share the Word of God today. Uh, The great thing about the Word of God is the Word of God never fails us. The word of God is always truth. The word of God is a lamp onto our feet. So knowing that God's word never lies and knowing that we're living in these ends of times, how are we supposed to know what to do, what to listen, who is saying the truth? It's basically easy. You have to listen to a person that's in tune with the Holy Spirit. So before we start, we always start off with a prayer and we're going to start off right now. Father God, I want to say thank you once again for allowing me to be able to speak to your people around the world, speaking about your holy word, dear Jesus. I want to say, Father God, please have the Holy Spirit indwell with me, speak through me. I am an active and willing vessel to be used by you, dear Lord God. Let it only be your word that be spoken through my mouth and not my words or my voice. I want it to be yours, Father God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, you must be wondering, okay, Caesar, tell me, what is the title of today's message? Great, I'm glad you asked. The message of today, the title of today's message is called Apostasy, Deception, and False Doctrines. Okay, it's a heavy topic. But we start off with the first biblical reference, which is on Acts 16, 17. The girl who followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. You'll find that again in Acts 16, 17. In the above verse, when Satan used the girl, a slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination to identify herself and her fortune telling with Paul's team. It was his master's plan to defile the church of God with other mixtures. He has done this successfully throughout the ages. It has always been his lethal stroke. And that is, if you can beat him, Join them is the devil's mode of operation. Throughout history, and increasingly so today, Christianity is a myriad of traditions, doctrines of demons, witchcraft, and New Age gobbledygook. Okay? Unfortunately, some of this mixture has infiltrated into the Pentecostal and Charismatic camp. Listen carefully to some of today's most popular teachers. They are popular because most of what they teach is ear-tickling, pleasant, affirming, and non-confrontational. I want you to learn. I want you to. I'm going to repeat this again. They are popular because most of what they teach is tickling ears. It's pleasant. It's affirming, and it's non-confrontational. For the most part, it's happiness, prosperity, gospel. It certainly does not contain any power to get you beaten and thrown in jail. The whole counsel of God is missing from their presentation. In many cases, opinions and feelings are emphasized more than the scriptures. And this is wrong. 
the teachers and pastors are a part of what I call progressive and seeker-friendly churches that really are digressive. In many of them, sin and redemption have been exchanged for social justice and doing good. Multitudes of people have hidden themselves behind these fig leaf churches. They are content in being religious. The fig leaves are their self-righteous works and the natural goodness of a person. But according to Finney, they are useless for revival. Why are they useless for revival? There is a certain type of Christian that although being constructively involved in the church and pass off as being very good Christians are useless in revival. I do not mean that they are wicked, but they have a form of piety which has no fire and efficiency and actually repels new believers and wards off the truth. The social economics pressure in our Western culture is greater than it's ever been. The decades that are to follow of the 2020s will be filled with increasingly stressful situations in our nation. More natural disasters, more famines and pandemics, more diseases, more deaths, some that may be greatly alter the social economical structure of the nature of a nation. The peace of life will be almost non-existent. The pace of life will not get any slower. The seeds of Marxist socialism, Islam, and atheistic communism has been sown in America. The evil seed has been sown. And the jury is still out to what kind of harvest they will produce. The indoctrination of an antichrist agenda has gained momentum in the last generation. But God, here's what I believe and see coming. All of the all of these characteristics of a humanistic new age will result in more and more people connecting with the emptiness of their own hearts. They will be void of themselves. They will feel no joy. And this will result in multitudes sensing their needs for the reality of the living God and the peace and joy that comes from Jesus. Even in the midst of chaos, hatred, and unrest, there is a great harvest of souls coming. And we, the true Christians, must be ready. Be ready for that harvest. For people will need to know who the true living God is. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. You can also follow us on Twitter, okay? And our handle on Twitter is A the Desert. That's where you're gonna find the voice in the desert at the handle A the Desert. Okay, so follow us there so you can uh, get our tweets throughout the day and uh, some encouraging messages. You can also listen to our podcast uh, in iHeartRadio. All you have to do is search for a voice in the desert uh, and like us there and put us down as your favorite. And you can listen to us on your daily commute as you're going back and forth in your car uh, and listen to us in, as, uh, at your leisure or at your home. Okay. If you think that was enough, we got another surprise. You can find us at iTunes, okay? On Podcast iTunes. Just search for A Voice in the Desert, and you're going to find us right there. And all you have to do is subscribe to it. Uh, anytime a new podcast is out, uh, it will automatically be downloaded onto your device, okay? You can also follow us at Stitcher Radio. All you have to do is uh, search for A Voice in the Desert. You're going to find us, follow us, and you'll be able to listen to us at your leisure. Okay, and uh, but always uh, your first recourse should be a www. 
a voice in the desert Dot net. There you will have all our archive, latest, message, latest messages, and also uh, downloaded uh, materials that uh, we provide for you for your learning experience. Okay? Once again, thank you for listening to us. God bless you. And uh, can't wait to give you our next message on next week. Okay? Take care. Bye. Tell your friends and family about it. Please follow us on Facebook and subscribe via iTunes.